Good morning and welcome. This morning we're going to have a little change in our normal rosary. We're going to be praying the novena to the Mother Perpetual Help found in the front cover of our music aid uh, and our music liturgy. We're going to be going over this morning some changes, so they're going to need a little extra time with this. So if you will join me in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Most holy and immaculate Virgin and our Mother Mary, you are our perpetual help, our refuge, and our hope. We thank God for all your graces received through your intercession. Mother of perpetual help, we promise to love you always and to do all we can to lead others to you. Mother of perpetual help, confident of your powerful influence with God, we obtain for us these graces, the strength to overcome temptation, a perfect love for Jesus Christ, and a holy death so that we will live with you and your Son for all eternity. Let us pray as a community of faith. Mother of perpetual help, we call upon your most powerful name. Your very name inspires confidence and hope. May it always be on our lips, especially in time of temptation, in times of sickness and sufferings, and at the hour of our death. Blessed Lady, beg your Son Jesus to strengthen us as we bear our burdens with love and patience and to free us from all evil. May we follow the example of your Son and through him, with him, and in him commend ourselves to the care of our God of mercy. For our Holy Father, Bishop, Priest, Deacons in Christ, consecrated religious and laity, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. For the unity of all God's people, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. For the peace of our world, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. For the sick and suffering, the poor, powerless, and unemployed, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. For the reverence and protection of all human life, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. For the generous response to God's call to the priesthood and religious life, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. For the eternal rest of our beloved dead, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. For our personal petitions through the prayers of our Mother of Perpetual Help, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our Mother. In thanksgiving for all God's graces, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our Mother. In thanksgiving to God for the sacramental life of the Church, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. In thanksgiving to God for all our spiritual and material blessings, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. May the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, that he may defend you, within you, that he may sustain you, before you, that he may lead you, behind you, that he may protect you, above you, that he, he may bless you, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Thanks be to God. Good morning. I wanted to take this opportunity before we begin our Mass to bring your attention to the new Mass parts that can be found in your pews. And we're going to take um, some time for our new ordinary time 
setting to uh, review those parts so that you all become familiar with it for the next three weekends. So once we get to July, we won't um, need to do that anymore. So we're going to go ahead and start with the glory to God, which is on the first page, and then the latter half is found on the second page. remains unchanged. So then let's head over to the uh, Sanctus, the Holy, Holy, Holy. We proclaim your death.
to the great amen, which we will sing twice. So we'll repeat that. Stay, Lamb of God, and uh, be sure we have a repeat sign halfway through, so we'll repeat the first part once. historic Cathedral Basilica as we celebrate the 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time. God's Holy Word calls us to forgive one another as Christ has forgiven you. Our second collection is for our Cathedral School. Our ushers have resumed taking up the collections by coming to your pew with baskets. Kindly find today's readings under number 1011, 1011. And please stand and join me in singing our opening hymn, We Walk by Faith, number 583.
Good morning. We gather, and probably more true, God gathers us to offer our worship to him. This weekend, we remember and celebrate the feast of St. Anthony of Padua, the patron of our basilica. Uh, after mass, when you leave uh, in the plaza, uh, our stewardship committee will be giving fresh made, homemade bread uh, in the remembrance of the uh, giving of bread to the poor in honor of St. Anthony. And so let us pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. As we come before the Lord, let us be mindful of our faults and our failures, but even more mindful of the joy in God's heart as he can touch us with his mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our prayers, since without you mortal frailty can do nothing. Grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands 
we may please you by our resolve and by our deeds. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches tear off a tender shoot, and plant it on a high and lofty mountain, on the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit, and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs, and all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous. Although we know that we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous 
and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, this is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, to what shall we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord.
Good morning again. For those of you who are visiting or have been away for a while, uh, let me introduce myself. I've been here for about six weeks now. Someone told me that they were asked, who's the new priest at the cathedral? And they said, I don't know, but he's an old guy with a cane. Well, that's me, but I'm also Father Dan Mullane, a semi-retired priest of our diocese. The bishop has asked me to be the interim administrator between Father Jerry's retirement and the arrival of your new pastor at the beginning of July. And so it's been delightful to be here uh, last month and so far in this month. In my homily today, I will try to reflect on the scriptures, but then also to reflect on St. Anthony of Padua, the patron of our cathedral basilica. Then after mass, as I said, when you leave, uh, members of the parish who have baked good fresh bread uh, will give you a loaf in memory of the practice of people giving bread in honor of St. Anthony to the poor, to the hungry. The scriptures today, I think, remind us that great things, great things can come from very tiny beginnings. This is true throughout all reality. Science tells us that the human person in his or her conception begins as a one cell reality called a zygote. And it contains all of the DNA, the genetic makeup of that human person. Marvelous to think someone as big and overweight as me came from a one cell zygote. In the scriptures today, God speaks to us of how he makes use of what seems to be tiny and even insignificant to do great things with us, through us, and for us. Elijah, in that first reading, speaks for God who says, I'm going to go up into the mountains and take a clipping, the tender, most recent growth on a cedar tree, and I'm going to find a place to plant it and to let it grow. And someday I'll come back in that tiny little clipping from the top of a mighty cedar has become a mighty cedar itself. And birds of the air will come from all over and make their nests in it. Jesus talks about seeds and how seeds are the source of life. And he speaks of a farmer who goes out and sows seeds in a field. And then he goes home and goes to sleep. He doesn't know how, but the seed knows how to put down roots, to gradually send a sprout through the earth, and eventually become a field ripe for the harvest. And then he can go out and reap that harvest. Jesus goes on to speak of another seed, the mustard seed. The next time you go to a supermarket, go to the spice aisle and see if you can find a little bottle of mustard seeds. Tiny, tiny, tiny. And Jesus says a mustard seed, the smallest of seeds, he calls it, 
can be planted and grow into a large tree or shrub. And there's some irony in what Jesus is saying, because in his day, mustard shrubs were thought to be an invasive reality, a weed, something they didn't want in their fields. And yet that tiny seed would fall to the earth, germinate and grow into a large bush or tree. And he said, birds of every kind will come and make their nests in it. He's telling us that God begins with us in quiet, tiny ways. Sometimes I think we make a great mistake of thinking, well, what can God do with me? I'm just one person. God can do with you or with me whatever he chooses to do. And he can speak to us. I think of the story of Elijah the prophet in a cave waiting for God to come and God doesn't come in mighty and earth-shaking ways. He keeps waiting until God comes in a tiny whispering voice and speaks to him about God's will. That happens to other people, but it happens to you and to me. God can speak to us in inspirations of our heart when we know what it is God, we think at least, wants us to do or to become. And it is important for us to hear that inspiration that voice and be led where God would lead us and become the person God would have us to be. God did not create any of us without purpose. And so we discover that and live that and in that become the person God made us to be. Today is the feast of St. Anthony of Padua, a 16th, 17th century saint. The story is told after he died, they were building a basilica in Padua to honor St. Anthony. And a young teenage girl was helping with the work and fell from the scaffolding and landed in a large barrel or vat of water and drowned. And they went and found her mother who came to see her daughter not breathing, laying on the ground. And she looked to heaven and cried out, Saint Anthony, Give me back the daughter I have lost, and I will equal her weight in grain to be made into bread for the poor. And the girl opened her eyes and began to breathe. And that, according to that tradition, is where the practice of bread for the poor, connected with St. Anthony, takes place. How did Anthony get to that place? He was a young boy in Portugal, and no doubt heard or felt God stirring in his heart, which as he grew up led him to Italy, where he joined the Augustinian order and studied to become a priest. But before he did, 
early Franciscans who were martyred in North Africa. Bodies were brought back to be buried in Italy. And he was inspired to give his life to God even as a martyr. And so he went to the Franciscans and asked that he be allowed to join them so that he might be a martyr for the faith. He became a Franciscan, but never was allowed to go on the missions to North Africa. But after he was ordained, became a very wise teacher, a very fervent preacher, and a work a, a priest who, who turned thousands to God in a deeper way. And it was that life that started with a inspiration that led him to be a saint. It was those miracles like the young girl that lead us to be aware and mindful of the poor. I learned about St. Anthony and the poor growing up in a family where that was important to my father. As he aged, he was always misplacing things. He'd lose his glasses, he'd lose his wallet, he'd forget where he left one thing or another, his phone, and then he'd say, I'm going to have to go take something to St. Anthony so he helps me find it. He did that so often, we used to tell him he kept St. Anthony on a retainer. <laughs> but it was always giving to the poor. Traditionally in Catholic churches, as I grew up in the back of church, there was a little locked box with a slit in it that said, for the poor. And people could put their offerings for the poor in that box. When I got here to the cathedral, I learned that once a month, instead of a box for a second collection for, for the poor, there is a second collection for the poor each month. And we celebrate that tradition, reminding ourselves this weekend on his feast of bread. Now in street slang, bread can also mean money. But bread is something that nourishes life. And we are called by the example of St. Anthony and the needs of the poor to give bread to those who are needy and those who are hungry. I think a lesson from our scriptures is to listen to the stirrings of God in our heart. Jesus says those examples of the people sowing or the slip cut from the top of the cedar tree are images, he said, of what? Of the kingdom of God. And where does the kingdom of God happen? It happens in our minds and in our hearts and in the works of our lives. God leads us to know and to live his will. And in that, the kingdom of God happens. It is a teaching of our church that everybody, without exception, is called to be a saint. Not a saint like Anthony, for whom we have a statue on a pillar, but an everyday saint, what one author called a neighborhood saint, a good person who lives their life in and for God. And so God calls us to be saints, to be listeners to his voice, to be doers of his will, to be fathers or mothers or spouses in whose lives the kingdom of God happens. This very weekend in Houston, 650 high school age kids were gathered in our CYO convention. How important for us to be able to teach them 
to listen for God's voice in the very experiences of their life, to do God's will. And we shouldn't expect that God always expects us to do something great or spectacular. In finding God's will, we do not look for the great, but we look for the good, for the good that God would bring about in our lives and through us in the lives of others. And the scriptures today speak to us that when we do that, we are part of the kingdom of God. Let us now together profess our faith in the words of our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now lift up our needs to God in prayer for our church here and all over the world, the unity of Christians and all God's people, for peace in our nation and our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, first responders, healthcare professionals, the elderly, hospitalized, those in nursing care, and for the needs of all who participate with us at this Mass we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For inactive Catholics and for non-Catholics, that they em may embrace God's love through this Holy Eucharist and our Catholic faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations, the reverence of all human life and religious liberty, for the poor, victims of abuse, the unemployed, marginalized, refugees, and displaced people of our world, we pray to the Lord. For the dying, for Matt Francis Sr. and all our beloved dead, and for the comfort of all those who grieve, we pray to the Lord. For protection from hurricanes, storms, and floods, for the safety of our visitors and travelers, 
and for the silent intentions of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we are members of a needy world, needy families, needy church. We are also blessed that we might lift these needs to you in prayer with confidence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join me in singing The Kingdom of God, number 639. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father Almighty. O oh God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament. Grant, we ask, that the sustenance they provide us may not fail us in body or in spirit. Grant this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. 
our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through your beloved Son, Christ our Lord. For our, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, with all the hosts of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your Spirit down upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, David our Bishop, with all the clergy and people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that with, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us the peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. We believe that the most blessed sacrament of the altar is the true and full presence of Jesus Christ, his body, blood, soul, and divinity. As Catholics who are in the state of grace come to Holy Communion, those of other faiths are also invited to approach the altar with hands over their hearts and pray with the priest for all the unity of God's people. Please join me in singing Seed, Scattered, and Sown, number 830.
Let us pray. At this reception of your Holy Communion, Lord, as it foreshadows the union of the faithful with you, so may it bring about unity in your church. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Registration for the school year 2021-2022 are being accepted now for St. Anthony Cathedral Elementary School and Monsignor Kelly High School. Please contact the schools for further information. Now that hurricane season has begun, included in our bulletin is our St. Anthony Cathedral Basilica's prayer to avert hurricanes. Please pray it daily. Please see your bulletin for information on the, on the Diocesan Summer Camp Cathedral Vacation Bible School, Market of Hope, and Knights of Columbus. Before leaving, kindly tidy up your pew for our next Mass. Thank you. As you leave in the plaza of the church, you will be offered uh, some fresh bread, homemade bread by members of the parish, parish uh, to remind you of the blessings that St. Anthony gave and will give through us to the poor. The bread out in front of the church has already been blessed. As a reminder of that, we'll bless these loaves of bread that surround his statue. Lord, we ask your blessing upon this bread that it may be nourishment to us, that with, through us you may give nourishment to those who are hungry. We ask this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join me in singing Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, number 613. 